and we are practicing the previous year gate question for the round robin CPU scheduling algorithm. In this question, we are going to solve the gate 2020 question, which is going to make use of the two algorithms. One is the shortage of first and the other is round robin definitely. So it will be kind of revision once again for you and it was a numerical based question with two marks. So the question is straightforward. We have been given four processors P1, P2, P3, P4. Their arrival times are zero and the requirement of burst time is as given in the milliseconds. Now the question simply says, if you make use of the round robin with time quantum four milliseconds and if you make use of the shortage job first algorithm, find the absolute value of difference between the average turnaround time of SJF and round robin algorithm. So you just don't have to do anything, implement both the algorithms separately, find the turnaround time for each process, for each algorithm, average for each algorithm, find the difference, okay? And the question says, uh, round up up to the two decimal places. So let's do that first of all, so let's do the SJF at first, I will directly schedule, shortest job first, if at all, any one of you is confused, please go back in the playlist find out the shortage of first we have done so many questions we have explained it very much in detail right so shortest job first by the name itself it says it says that whichever process is shortest please should do that and also we know that all the process are arriving at time zero so we are going to simply pick the least time process that here we can see is p3 so let's put p3 at time zero needs to finish it at 2. The next smallest process is P4. P4. That finishes. So 2 plus 4, 6. The next smallest is P2. It needs how much? 7. 6 plus 7. 30. Last process 1. How much it needs? 8. 13 plus 8. 21. So this is the GAN chart for SJF. Now the turnaround time. So the turnaround time for each process, right? So in order I would write for P1, P2, P3, P4 like this. Now everyone you must be thinking what is turnaround time? So here please recall once again nothing but in the completion time minus arrival time. The total time a process spends being in the system, either running or waiting. That is known as the turnaround time. So, we can also find it out by burst time plus waiting time. We can also do it by completion time minus arrival time. Alright, so we know the completion time for P1 is completing at 21. What is its arrival? 0. So, 21 minus 0. So, it is 21. Right? Now, for P2, completing at 13. 13 minus 0, 13. For P3, completing at 2. 2 minus 0, 2. For P4, completing at 6. 6 minus 0, 6. This is the turnaround time for respective. So, let me write it also. P1, P2, P3 and P4. Let's quickly get the sum. So, 21 uh, plus 3, 4, 4 plus 2, 6, 6, 12, so 2 and 1, and that becomes 42. So 42 is a total turnaround time. We have to find out the average. So divide by 4. 42 divided by 4, how much it becomes? It becomes 10.50. Okay, so that is the average turnaround time for SJF. So for SJF, every turnaround time comes 10.50. So this is half of the work done. Now next we will do for the round robin CPU scheduling with the time quantum 4 milliseconds. So once again, nothing but then you have to make the chart over the CPU at time 0. So now because all the processes are already in the ready queue, so I am not going to make any ready queue right now because I know P1, P2, P3, P4, that is going to be the order. So I am going to start with that order only. So because all are in the ready queue, P1 goes first. It given 4, so 4 quantum, uh, 4 uh, time is given as per the quantum. 
and then it becomes 4 here it becomes 4 there next comes P2 it's again given 4 so 4 plus 4 8 this becomes 3 now comes P3 it's given 2 because it needs only 2 so 10 and it becomes 0 next comes P4 it needs only one quantum so 14 and it also becomes 0 now you are left with only two process that is P1 and P2 so we will take P1 first in the order it needs 4 more so 14 plus 4 18 done it becomes 0 next and the last is P2 which needs 3 so 18 plus 3 is 21 as simple as that right now once again the turnaround time for all the process in the round robin so here the turnaround time for each process so here is p1 p2 p3 and p4 let's find it out p1 finishes at 18 and no no uh, yeah its arrival is 0 so completion time minus arrival 18 minus 0 becomes 18 p2 finishes at 21 so it becomes 21 minus 0. P3 finishes at 10, so it becomes 10 minus 0. And P4 finishes at 14, so it becomes 14 minus 0. Let's quickly take the sum. 3 and 1, 2, 2, 4, 5 and 6. So we have total 6 to 3. So for the average turnaround time, it becomes 6 to 3 divided by 4. What is the value? So it is going to be 2 and it is going to be 5.7 and 5, 15.75. So that is the average turnaround time for round robin. So let me just write this down here. Yeah, it looks quite filled up now. So round robin got 15.75. This one is 10.50. What you have to do is nothing but then find out the difference. So, that's the answer. So, what's come up the value? Okay, 50 is 5, 75 is 2, and 50 is 5, 1, 1 is 0. So, this is the value 5.25 is the real answer. So, let me just write it down here. The answer is 5.25 and mind it why because it's a numerical based question so they have already mentioned round up up to the two decimals so you have to make use of the two decimal values right the absolute difference so here is the answer this is how the question is to be done and I believe solving these questions are doing nothing but then practicing all the algorithms one by one. So we just now practiced SJF, round robin, the turnaround, the average turnaround. Right? So we'll see you once again very soon in the next video. Till then, bye bye. Take care.